Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Supply. Let's make the perfect addition to my lady's costume. Let's go with a bodice belt. Now we're going to use a design that's called a cut and slash. Very period look. If you're not familiar with this, I'll explain. All right, so anything I use in this video, weaverleathersupply.com or check below. We've got links there. I'm going to take you straight to the website. Also, if you want to know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. So let's step over to our pattern table, get started. This is one of the great examples throughout history where a circumstance actually turned into a fashion trend. And it's a trend we still use to this day. Now the cut and slash or the slashed design. A lot of theories out there on how this originated. But the one I've heard most often makes the most sense to me is that in Europe, as we enter the Elizabethan period, the swords have gotten thinner and longer, basically making armor ineffective. So now we've got long swords, less armor. In a battle situation, we're actually slashing the clothing of those around us. Now we've got a garment that needs repair. So being a soldier, I'm sure they're not going to jump out to their local fabric store to find a nice matching fabric, right? So anything that would do would come up under that slash. Well, the more layers we have, the more experience we are on the battlefield, basically a resume. So we're going to go with a very period design. Now on our belt, this is easy to do because we don't have to worry about left, right, up or down. We're going to cut two panels of each. These panels will meet in the middle on the front and will lace. Same with the other two panels. So let's jump over to a digital pick. So on this, we're going eight inches long. On our smaller panels, we're going five and a quarter wide on our larger seven inches wide on that one end. Now lengthwise eight inches on all panels. On our holes, we're going to use a three eighths inch grommet. So therefore, we need, we need to come in at least five eighths inch from our edge. But right here, we're going to come down three quarters, three quarters. But over here from the point, we're going to come down one inch and then one and a quarter inch spread down here, three quarters, one and a quarter inch spread. Okay, so over to our design. Simple flower design, and I've seen this in a lot of historic portraits. So we've basically got four cuts here. One and a half inch long by three quarters of an inch wide, and we're going to give that a one half inch spread, drop a spot right in the middle of that. This is going to look good. So I've got two beautiful pieces of leather picked out. Let's jump over to our cutting table, get started. I've transferred our patterns over to our pattern sheeting. Technically, this is a bag stiffener, but it makes a great pattern material. It's easy to cut, easy to mark, but very durable. On our leather, let's go with our frontier. This is beautiful. This is the black cherry. It's going to look good over our white deer tan cow. Now, we're going this route for a couple of reasons. Well, first off, color, absolutely. But secondly, this is a five to six ounce leather. It's got some good weight to it. So first off, this is going to feel like a quality project, but it's going to be comfortable on us. All right. So we're going to do this a little bit differently because we're going to line this. We're going to overcut our pieces, then we'll trim to size. So let's start right here. What I want to do is give this piece at least about a half of an inch all the way around. So let's go ahead and mark this. Good. Okay, let's leave that right where this is. Now, make this your own. Go with any design you want. But we're going to use these four cutouts. Now, we can cut these, absolutely. But we're going to use a corner knife. So all I need to do here is simply mark the top and bottom. But absolutely draw these in if we're going to cut these by hand. Good. Now, you'll also notice on my pattern, I've got different colors of markings here. We're going to punch the holes that are circled in black. But our red, we simply need to mark that. We'll drop a spot in there. Okay, so we've got this marked. Now, I just want to cut this about a half inch out. Just give us enough room so we can trim the size. Good, we've got that. So I'm going to do that again. And then right here, I'm going to do two panels. We've got our four pieces cut, so let's take these over to our punch table. 
Like I said, we can absolutely cut these by hand if we don't have a round corner knife or a corner knife, but this is going to make things so much easier. I love these. We're going to go with the 40 millimeter. That's just a hair longer than one and a half. So over here, I'm going to line up this first point right on my inside mark and my second mark. Now these are not drive tools. There we go. It's actually a knife. Okay, let's do the other side. There we go. Very clean. In fact, the way the, the blade is shaped, we've actually got a little bit of a bevel there. That's going to look good. Okay, so I'm going to do this 15 more times. Good. That didn't take too long. Hey, those look pretty nice. All right. Let's step back over to our main table, work on our white deer tan. This is one of my all-time favorite leathers, deer tan cow. Traditional tannage on a deer is very supple, but a deer, it's a wild animal, it's a smaller animal, so the tannery is going to tan a cow to feel like a deer. Well, that greatly reduces the cost, but also we now have these very large panels that we can work with. The one thing we've got to remember here is so let's overcut quarter inch to a half inch all the way around. We've got that. In fact, one of the things I love about the deer tan cow, it's always got a very cool natural edge. Okay, so let's reset here. Let's glue our pieces together. A good rule of thumb in leather craft is this. If we're going to tack simply to sew, let's go with a white glue. But if we're going to tack for permanent, let's go with a contact cement. Now, we're going to sew here, but when we put these two pieces together, we glue these together and we trim that down, trim to size. I want that edge to look, feel, and react as one piece of leather. So we're going to go with our contact cement. But we've also got a decision to make. Do we go top grain up or flesh up? Actually, I like that. But I also do like the contrast and textures there. That looks good. In fact, uh, you know what? We can flip a coin on this one. Make it your own again. But let's go with our top grain up. So right here, the only thing we're going to do is we're going to drop in glue about half an inch in all the way around. Now we've overcut, but let's give it about three quarters of an inch in from the edge of our overcut. Good, we've got that done. Now we're not gluing this completely down because technically, to be very period, the fabric would be loose behind the slash. So let's give that about five minutes. Let that glue set. We've given that a few minutes. So let's glue these two pieces together. Now in the middle, we will have a spot right here. That's going to help secure that. Okay, let's press that down good. Now I'm going to do the other three pieces the same way. Well, that looks good. Nice. So our glue is going to be wet for just a little bit. I don't want to cut my glue when it's wet because it gives the chance for our panels to move a little bit. So let's give this half an hour, then we'll trim to size. Good dry time. So with a new or sharp blade every time, let's cut this to size. There we go. And that is the reason we're overcutting. Look at that edge. Now it wastes a little extra leather, but absolutely worth it. We are cut to size. Let's step over to our punch table, then we'll drop in a stitch line. This is a tough call because I'd like to add a round corner to all of our panels. That'd make this look very finished. But at the same time, right here, I'd like those two pieces to butt together, but also the additional panels. I'd love to see those, but a round corner is going to look good, but I think we ought to leave it right where it is. So the only step we're going to do here, let's go over to our grommet holes. We're going to use a 3 eighths of an inch punch. Let's just do our best 
to hit those as clean on our mark as we can. Well, that looks good. Okay, let's step over to my shop, drop in a stitch line. Let's start with our Weaver 303. I've had a number of industrial machines, my hands down, favorite, absolutely. Easy to thread, easy to maintain. But if you're new to Leathercraft or you're working along and you feel like you need a machine to bump up to the garment weights, perfect way to go. Because our first biggest fear is the speed of the machine. Will I be able to even control this? Absolutely. In fact, this will move incredibly slowly if we want it to. So let's go with a black thread. We're doing a period project, but we're lining this. If I'm lining, I'm sewing. So let's go with black. That'll be less obvious. In fact, barely seen. So let's start right here. Let's sew around and then we'll come back and do our back stitch right where we are. In fact, notice how slow this machine will go if I want it to. And let's overstitch five. And when we're down, how about we reverse one? There we go. This piece is sewn. Let's pull this out, trim our thread. And there we are. That looks good. Now, one big point. We've got a two to three ounce and a five to six ounce back to back. That's about an eight to nine ounce. That's maxing out the thickness on this machine. Where I'm going with that is that we might have some foot marks across here. But the great thing about a pull-up leather, let's rub our finger across those and they absolutely disappear. Very nice. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing with the other three pieces. We have got our four pieces done. Now, I am by no means a professional sewer or a production sewer, but with our 303, we pulled it off and it looks good. All right, so let's drop in our grommets a spot and we're lacing these together. If you've never set a grommet, super easy to do. Now, the difference between an eyelet and a grommet. An eyelet, one piece, basically a hole protector. A grommet, on the other hand, is two piece. We've got our throat, a washer. This is a hole protector and strengthener. That's why we see these used on tarps. Now, something we didn't talk about, the suede or the flesh side. Suede gives us grip. That's why it's used on saddle seats and shoulder pads, mouse pads. Well, right here, that's going to do the same thing for us. So right here, let's go with our 3 8 inch grommet. Now, this is the antique copper. I'd like to go antique nickel, but we use that in every video. Let's change it up. At Weaver, we've got multiple finishes and multiple sizes. So let's come through from the front. Press that through. Now let's flip that over. I'm using a little piece of two by four here just so that doesn't hang off. Just makes it a little bit easier. Now the great thing about these, we don't have to line this up in the anvil. The tool will actually do that for us. But let's don't forget our washer. We, we're going to need that. So let's drop that right there. Now these always stick on me. So let's try to pull a little bit hard. Not bad. But yeah, we can see the throat has wrapped around the inside of our washer there. That looks good. Now, if we do have a small mark ghosting, again, pull up leather. Let's just rub that and it's absolutely gone. Okay, so I'm gonna set a few more of these. Well, there we are. Those look good. I like our finished choice. That's beautiful. Now, one more point. When you forget to add the washer or you forget to add the throat, just know that you are amongst good company. All right, so let's jump over, drop in a spot, then we'll lace these together. We add spots in every video. I almost feel like I need to apologize, but they're inexpensive, they're easy to add, and they add a nice touch to our projects. So if you're not familiar with these, it's five easy steps. Now we're gonna go with the antique copper, quarter inch, flower spot. These are beautiful. And we're just going to add one right in the middle. We left this loose, so that's going to help secure that down. So five easy steps. Now with our art knife, I've got the longer blade on this because we're going to try to mimic the shape of our tines. And we've got a good bit of leather to go through here. So we've got a pallet on the bottom so we can go into that with our blade. Let's take our spot, first step, 
and I'm going to press. I'm going to straddle our mark and press into the leather. Good. Now I know where our tines are going to land. So let's take our art knife and I'm going to come through from one side. Now I don't want to go too deep here because I don't want more slit than spot. Okay, let's flip this around. Make that hole a little more square. Good. Now let's take our spot. Press that through. Nice. Goes right through. Good and flush. That's what we want. Let's flip this over. I'm going to bend my tines inward on the back. And the last step, let's put this on our marble. Now I'm going to, I'm going to hit this, but not hard enough to ding it. That's about all we need. So now when I flip this around, I cannot feel those tines. They've actually curved in. Okay, I'm going to do that three more times. Well, those look good. Not too much, not too little. Very happy here. Let's add some lace. We've got one more decision to make. Our lace. At Weaver Leather, we've got some great options. I love our suede lace. This comes in some beautiful colors. If we need strength, Latigo's going to work nicely for us. But from time to time, I want my lace to match my project. And sometimes this leather isn't available on the spool. So let's go with our frontier. Now, I'd love to cut lace out of our white deer. That would look good here. The problem is, it's a little flimsy. It's a two to three ounce. Now, a quarter inch lace out of that would absolutely have the strength, but again, it's a little flimsy. So let's come right out of the hide we've been working on. Now on our lace, we need about 42 inches, give or take. So let's cut a straight edge in this to start with. Good. Yeah, that's going to make nice lace. Okay, so we need four pieces, about a quarter of an inch, six millimeters, give or take. We've got our four pieces and those look good. Now a good point, a safety note. Notice when I'm cutting my lace, I'm trying to keep my hand either at or behind my knife. Yeah, because, and this has happened to me so many times, my hand's down here and I'm cutting. If my blade jumps, up, jumps my straight edge, it's going to stop right in my thumb. So let's try to keep our hand as much as we can behind our blade when we're cutting. Good. Okay, let's reset here. Let's lace this together. There are about six different ways we can lace our bodice belt. Make it your own. Absolutely go with what you like. We're going to keep it easy. We're going to do a simple crossover. Now, great point about this belt. We've got four 8-inch panels, so we've got a 32-inch waist. Well, if we spread this out just two inches, now we've got a 40-inch waist. So it's super easy to size this, but also I kind of like it a little more with it spread some because we can see that lace. So let's do this. We're going to do a simple crossover. Now, I want my knot or my bow at the top hanging down. To me, that just looks a little more, period. So on our bottom two holes, let's come through with our lace. Good. Even that out. Now, our next hole, I'm going to go across and down one. And then across and down one. And the same again. But down here, let's come through. And I'm going to do the same thing with this side. And that piece is laced. That looks good. I'm going to lace the balance. But right here, I'm going to make sure I lace on the ends of this so our two pointed ends come together. And our front piece, we're going to come right out of those top two holes. And that looks good. I love dangling lace. So we knot this or add a bow. That is going to be the perfect addition to a costume. Very nice. I would love to model this beautiful belt, but I'm just not going to be able to pull that one off. But the big point, I hope you have a great time picking your leather, 
your color combinations, your design, and I hope it's the perfect addition to your costume. Good luck with your projects. Mm -hmm.